Now, people will often ask, well, if there is such a huge amount of evidence showing that human beings have been around for hundreds of millions of years, then why, why don't we hear about it very much? And the reason we don't hear about it is because of what I call a process of knowledge filtration. You know, we can call the little blue box here you know, the knowledge filter. And what it represents is certain fixed ideas that exist within the scientific community. And one idea that they're very fixed on now is this idea that humans like us came into existence about 100,000 years ago, having evolved from more primitive ape-like creatures. So reports of evidence that conform to these fixed ideas will pass through this social filter very easily, which means you'll read about this evidence in your scientific textbooks in college or high school. You'll hear scientists talking about this evidence at their professional gatherings. Excuse me, you won't hear. You won't hear them talking about it. And you won't see the objects on display. Excuse me. OK, I'm, I've got ahead of myself there. You will hear about it because it passes through the filter. It conforms to these accepted ideas. So this means you will read about it in the textbooks. You will hear scientists talking about it at their conferences. And you will see the objects on display in the museums of natural history. But you know, if we have uh, reports of evidence which may be just as good in terms of quantity and quality, but which happen to radically contradict these fixed ideas, they tend to be filtered out. They tend to be forgotten, put aside, and in some cases, actively suppressed. And this means that we don't read about these things in the textbooks. We don't hear you know, scientists talking about these things at their professional conferences, you know, unless I happen to be there. Sometimes I am. And we don't normally see you know, the objects on display in the museums of natural history. Or if they are on display, uh, they are misrepresented. Today, I really do believe that um, these skeptical organizations like PSYCOP, which grew out of the American Humanist Association, these people are primarily, largely motivated by their anti-religious views. They associate parapsychology as somehow uh, being part of, a, part of something which may lead to greater superstition or religion. And so they, do every, they have gone to the most extraordinary lengths to deny, distort, and suppress the evidence. I mean, there's even a... It was a National Research Council report in 1987, which announced to the press, the committee finds no scientific justification for research conducted over a period of 130 years for the existence of parapsychological phenomena. And it was a total hatchet job. I mean, they were looking at data gathered by the U.S. Army. And uh, there was a Colonel, Ale Colonel John Alexander. He's retired now. But he wrote a very blunt article criticizing this NRC report. And this NRC report, on my, I should add here, was led by three psychologists, Dr. George, Dr. George Lawrence, a civilian army psychologist with a history of opposition to psi research, Ray Hyman, council member of uh, PSYCOP, and psychologist James Alcock, also a member of PSYCOP, and well, widely known for his books and articles attacking parapsychology. So in other words, the NRC appointed three psychologists with widely known views against the legitimacy of parapsychology, they came and they announced a conclusion they didn't find anything. So the following year, Colonel, James, Colonel John Alexander wrote a very blunt article criticizing the NRC report. And he basically concluded, we should worry about the fact that the highest scientific court in the land operated in such a biased and heavy-handed manner, and that there seems to be no channel for appeal or review of their work. What, we may ask, are they afraid of? Is protecting scientific orthodoxy so vital that they must deny evidence? and suppress contrary opinion. I mean, that's how, that's how these people have operated for decades and how, to a large extent, they're still operating. See, the topic itself is very complicated and it took me a whole book, you know, to get my argument across. And I sometimes wonder, uh, you know, if I can, how easy it is, or how good I am at summing, summing up the, uh, some of the main points and just getting them across, you know, because I really do think that these, these um, so-called skeptics are driven by an ideology. And it's something for them that just has to be true, regardless of the evidence. And uh, they're going to do everything they can to deny and suppress any evidence to the contrary. 
it's, it's very unnerving. I mean, you know, you're getting attacked by some very senior people, some, some heavyweights, you know, professors and deans and all. But then I thought, wait a minute, you know, uh, it makes sense. <laughs> you know, I don't care what they say. You know, now I use very different approaches. I mean, uh, you know, they, they were the, 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 the experts were commenting, you know, they were, they were. And finally I said, well, wait a minute, I'm the expert. The, I'm, I'm the expert on this one, you know. Why should I be intimidated by the expert, you know. And frankly, they, they, were, they were coming up with very annoying criticism. Uh, first they did the, uh, the personality thing. I mean, they, I, I wasn't an Egyptologist and uh, I didn't know what I was talking about. And, you know, he's a charlatan and, you know. Uh, believe me, I was called a lot of things. And there was some instance where it got very nasty. I mean, in Egypt, I was called an anti a Jewish supporter, a Zionist. And here I was called an anti-Semitic for some reason, I don't know. It all went berserk. Uh, How did it end up having anything to do with the Jews? Well, here's the weird one, is that the pyramids, there's, there was an old theory that the pyramids were built by the Jews in captivity. Yeah. Now, if you supported the theory, you were a Zionist, according to the Egyptians. If you didn't support the theory, to some you were anti-Semitic. But there you are, I mean, had people saying you're anti-Semitic, you know, you don't support them. It all came out because once you're exposed that way, you, you're out there, you know, and anybody can take a pot shot at you. And in this case, the big guns came out. I mean, uh, it wasn't just the, the lunatic fringe taking pot shots. I mean, I had, uh, you know, heavy weights. I mean, I had the, 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 the Ministry of Tourism in Egypt, the director of the antiquities, you know. And, but things have, you know, I've, I've learned how to deal with this. You know, and the funny thing about this, I mean, I, I began to see, I mean, I was getting angry because I began to see that there was a kind of auto da fe here. I mean, the, the, not only they wanted my blood, but their arguments were, uh, were very um, almost inquisitional. I mean, uh, uh, strange arrogance that came out. I'm not saying in general, I mean, there are some nice Egyptologists and some, but I was astounded. For example, this business about the door, you know, um, there could be a chamber at the end of this shaft. Maybe there isn't, we don't know. But I had the German director of the German Archaeological Institute who was responsible for this exploration, and I remember sitting next to him with the BBC, and this man quite happily said, there is nothing behind this door. And I remember the BBC guy, you know, taking notes, and so I gave him a nudge, I said, ask him, how does he know? It didn't occur to him, because it's funny how they don't, it doesn't occur to people to ask these authorities, they, they take them for granted. So I said, ask him how he knows there's nothing behind the door. And he said, why do you ask me? I said, well, I mean, how do you know there's nothing behind the door? And all he could say, after getting green and red in the face, was because I am an expert. <laughs> I said, you know, I'm, I'm professor so-and-so. So I said, it's not good enough. So I began to see this kind of strange world that I thought academics were very broad-minded and liberal, but there was such a lot of backstabbing, a lot of um, uh, refusal when things were so obvious. So, you know, I use, I use phrases now like, you know, they can bring me a, a hundred Egyptologists if I'm concerned. You know, I, I tell them, it doesn't matter how many you bring. You know, truth is not democratic. You don't vote on truth, you know. If it's true, it's true, I'm sorry. You know, you can bring me a zillion professors. And that's, you know, and I, uh, there's a wonderful phrase by the, the Robert Schock, who also did a huge controversy over the age of the Sphinx. And he has a lovely one. I mean, he, he was once shouted, uh, during a, a geological conference. He was shouted down and one geologist was very angry and he stood up and he said there is not a single Egyptologist who agrees with you. You are not following the professionals. And you know what he said? He had a lovely reply. He said, I do not follow the Egyptologist. I follow the science. That's what I follow. And the science tells me that the Sphinx is older. I'm not going to follow the Egyptologist. And that's, he's right. And there's a kind of, kind of arrogance that you find at this high level. It, it's, it's very disconcerting. 
but you must hold your ground, and it's the way it goes. You know, I mean, we know history, you know, Galileo and all the Darwin, you know, they, they, they got their fair share of this. Yeah, but Alex, you have to remember that the argument is not really about the evidence. The argument about, is about their assumptions and their, their preconceptions. That's what the ar- argument, the argument in this field is all about. Um, their preconceptions are that these sort of phenomena don't make any sense and challenges their worldview. And so they're going to do anything they possibly can to dismiss evidence that challenges their preconceptions. Because it's much easier to do that than to change their opinion.